Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna talk about Kenny 2O for lure painting and we're starting right now. Alright guys, why Kenny 2O and not any other kind of transparent paint? That is because Kenny 2O is a tie compared to other paints most almost every transparent paint still has pigments and if you layer those pigments they are gonna hide what's underneath and candy 2o because it's a dye it just changes the color but it will always show what is underneath even if you would layer on a black candy on this holographic foil as soon as it hits the light that black is gonna fade out and you're gonna see that holographic foil shine through that black and that's what's so special about candy now there are a few things you need to know about candy and I feel like for beginners especially it sometimes sounds a little bit intimidating to use but it's actually very simple and I just wanna explain with this video how simple it can be to use a candy 2O so when we are talking about applying a candy 2O in which occasion would you choose a candy 2O? And I got a few examples here. Alright, when would it be a good choice to use a candy 2O? Well, when you're painting holographic lures, that especially is a really good choice because the candy 2O is just gonna let that holographic foil shine through at its best. And the results are really amazing. Also, when you're playing around with pearlescent or metallic pigments like this, this is wicked quicksilver which is really nice with some candy on top another great option is when you're painting with glitter layering candy 2o on glitter that will make you preserve that sparkle effect that glitter gives you when you are laying transparent colors over there and especially if you're laying a lot of layers of transparent color you eventually might lose some of that sparkle that glitter provides Another few options that I have here are a few lures that have holographic foil on the inside. These also work very well with Candy 2O and you can first paint your lure with regular paints and then go over it with a candy to alter the color of the foil. And for the real DIYers that like to use aluminium tape on their lures, Candy 2O on this tape gives really amazing results and it really preserves the shine that the foil gives. Now we're gonna paint this lure and we're not only gonna use candy 2O, we're gonna use some other paints too, but then I can show you guys how it works. Alright, so we'll be painting some kind of fire perch, hot perch kind of lure and I wanna have a white belly. So I got some Vallejo dead white in my chamber, which is very easy to spray and a quick fix to change the color of the belly. So now that the belly is dry, I'm gonna take my stencil here, I'm just gonna hold it like that. <coughs> and I got some Vallejo hot orange in my chamber. And I'm just lightly gonna shoot some scales on there from one direction, from only from the back to the front. But if you just take the time to plan out the pattern you're going to paint, then most of the times you will be able to just use the candies at the last part so that you don't have to go over candies with another paint and that is just a very easy way to use candies without needing to seal it off or use any other paints on top of candies so that is why we did the belly at the beginning of this pattern and not when there would already be a candy on there so now we're gonna go over to our candies so if we want to use a candy 2o this always needs to be mixed with a carrier or a medium or a glue if you would like because if you look at a candy you can see it's almost like water and that's because there is no carry in this this is only the dye itself and if you would spray this alone on your lure you will have no adhesion you might experience chipping very very soon so that is why adhesion is so important because if your paint does not adhere to your lure and your clear coat will adhere to your paint then it's gonna chip off very easily and it's not always the fault of the clear coat. It might as well have been the paint that, is, that did not adhere very well to your lure. When it comes to mixing candy 2O, 4050 and 4030 are the most used mediums for this application. 
Now, 4050 and 4030, what's the difference? The difference is especially that the viscosity is way different. 4050 is way thicker than 4030. But in my personal opinion, I like 4050 the most because it's thicker and I like to use thicker paint sometimes. And that is because you can layer on thicker paints way thicker than you can do with thinner paints because they will spider web very easily. So that is why 4050 has my pre preference because you can always thin it down to a very thin and smooth running paint if you want to. But you can also leave it thicker and just up your air pressure a bit more and use it as a thicker paint. So I got my Candy 2O here in my chamber and I used 50% of 4050 and 50% of Candy 2O with a two drops of reducer. But because of the Candy 2O is already like water, it's gonna reduce that 4050 a lot as well. So this is, as you can see, quite runny. And I'm gonna shoot this with about 30 PSI. So on this side, I did two layers of candy and on this side only one. And now you can see how big the difference is when you start layering candy. So it's also a little bit of experimenting and experience here on how many layers of candy. Because if I will keep on layering yellow, it's going to get darker and darker. But I don't want it too dark right now. I want it to be, to be a nice bright yellow. So two coats is going to be enough. Now I will show you guys how I mix my candy to O. So first I take 4050. Not too much because we don't need a lot. And now I take my candy to O and I'm going to use about the same amount of candy to O as that I have 4050 in there. This is about the same amount. And as you can see, I'm going to use just one drop of reducer in there, not too much. I'm gonna mix that very well. Always do a little back flush to get that 4050 from the bottom of the airbrush up. And then they advise to let it sit for about 10 minutes so it can all emulsify. Now, I usually don't like to wait that long, so I don't wait. Now for this pattern, I will be layering an orange over that yellow and then a little bit of red on the top and then I will make it darker with the black. Why did I do my entire lure in yellow? Why didn't I just do only the parts that I wanted to be yellow, only yellow? That is because I want, to my, I want my colors to fade into each other. And if I would leave the yellow base out and I would only use that orange, that orange is going to look very different from that yellow. Now compared to when I spray that orange on top of that yellow, that orange contains that yellow and it's gonna create a fading effect it's gonna blend in each other so that's also a really nice technique that you can do with any kind of transparent paint but if you use the same base for both paints and then you take another paint on top of it so it's gonna give a better fade compared to when you use the yellow here and then you're gonna spray the red or the orange on top because that orange is gonna look very different from that yellow again I just shoot it with about 30 psi Alright, so now I got Candy 2O Blood Red here, but I'm going to use a little less Candy 2O mixed with my 4050 because as you can see in the bottle, Blood Red is already quite dark and if we're going to do 50-50 with this, then if we layer it out two times, it's going to be quite a dark red already and I want to give it a little bit more of a subtle lighter red, so that's why I'm going to use just a little bit less candy mixed with, with that 4050. So as you can see, that's that's not a lot of 4050 at all. I'm just going to use one drop of candy to O blood red. Now, this is not going to be reduced a lot by the candy. So that's why we're going to need a little bit more reducer in order to spray this very well. So now I added four drops of reducer. Right, so I actually made a mistake here. I layered too much candy and then it started to spider web and I tried to fix it, but then I actually just blew it all away. So now I got this kind of weird thing looking here. But um, 
we're gonna use this as an opportunity in this mistake we're gonna trade I'm gonna try to make a wound out of it but we'll see what we can do the same here just a little bit it blow all the way to the other side you can see it accumulated there and then it became darker than the rest of the lure but other than that the layering of the yellow to the orange to the red is very clean and very nicely but yeah we all make mistakes the best thing we can do is just see it as an opportunity and try to make something special out of it so this is actually a perfect opportunity to show you guys how it looks when a candy bleeds through another paint so I've got some opaque white here it's just regular opaque white and I'm gonna brush it on the red okay I'm not really sure why the white stays so white this time it is totally dry and it should start to bleed through now but it is still white maybe when I apply a clear coat it's gonna bleed through I I'm 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 pretty sure it's gonna bleed through when I apply a clear coat on this but I got an example right here this is my candy spoon um, this is white over a sealed candy and I missed one spot here and as you can see that one spot starts to bleed and the candy just goes through that white and it turns it red and the same here this also wasn't this is also just white on top of candy and as you can see that white turns red and that is what I mean with bleeding through so depending on the color you put on top of a candy it's gonna it's gonna alter it's gonna change color and that's because of the candy that bleeds through so now if you would put a black a regular black on top of this red of course that's not gonna turn red it's gonna turn to a very very dark black but if you put a yellow on there that yellow is gonna turn orange or even red so no matter what type of other paint you use on a candy if it's not sealed off it's gonna bleed through and now I'm gonna use Kenny 2O black for some striping and darkening of the back and a little bit of details and this black is also really nice to do final detailing final striping on other lures on, on regular paint because this black stays transparent no matter how much you layer it on and that's very nice for a black alright so I'm not entirely sure why this white still hasn't bled through so it might be because of the 4050 if you're lucky it seals off the candy enough and then it, you will not have a bleed through of course this is no guarantee and I'm gonna do a clear coat and then we're gonna see if that white turns red but just to make the wounds look like wounds and not like um, the paint just chipped off there I'm gonna apply a little bit of wicked opaque red in the core of every wound alright so as you can see I sprayed the eyes white and that's because I want some eyes that stick out and grab attention on this lure which is gonna make it really cool I did focus on the middle of the eye and let the overspray do the, the edges of the eye so the edges are a little bit grayish and the core is a bit more white so you do got a little bit more of a definition and not just a pure white eye now it's time for a clear coat Alright guys, allure is finished and as you can see the transition between yellow, orange and red is really great. I really like how this turned out. It, it has a kind of a natural feel to it this way because that transition is so smooth. That's really nice. 
and also that eye just by making it white it sticks out so much that's really cool and as for those wounds that white that you can see I do not have an explanation for this but normally the candy would bleed through and that white would turn red or orange depending on the candy that's underneath but in this case it actually stayed white and I think it has something to do with the 4050 that it kind of seals off that candy well enough so that it doesn't always bleed through I really can't explain it um, so that's unfortunate for me so I cannot show you perfectly what happens but you guys saw the spoon you, you do get an idea of what candy does to another paint it's 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 something you can play with and create nice kind of blotchy effects and underlaying colors so it is something really cool to, to, to experiment with as always guys I will leave a link in the description below for the materials that I used to paint this lure this will guide you to my web shop and in this way you can support me a little bit by buying some stuff there if you have any questions leave them in the comments down below thank you guys for watching and see you next time bye bye